And What's the problem? Uh, I just, I'm confused. Like, you want this for Nightcap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want this for Nightcap. I feel like, you know, talk, I, I just want sexy. I want gritty. I, I, just, I just, want a few what, dance yeah, moves, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and then I, I already have someone writing this, like, a song that I actually want to do. Timberland's producing it. It's crazy. But I'm wondering, I'm right? just wondering, like, how yeah. does sexy and gritty, like, really fit into, you know, the whole, and you dancing fit into Nightcap? But cap. clearly. Wait, wait, easier question. How does. Gritty is this. How does this, sexy is this. How does, how does uh, your co-host fit in? Be uh, Beverly. Yeah. I mean, Beverly, she can't really, um, what did, how do you say the word? Dance. She's not really like a star, you know? She's just like, you know, her cute little, like, shoddy bedroom wild thing. You know, if you would just have her in the back doing, like, you could cut to her if you want. I don't know if you want to do that. But, like, cut to her watching me. It's like envy in her eye because I can dance or whatever she can't. And it's like, you know, do that thing. But I just want it to be like a me thing. Okay, so <laughs> so I have final say. No, I actually have final say. No, I have final so. say. And I'm just going to say no. Um, no to what? No to this. No to you this. You know, this is why I quit music videos anyway. Like, just, <laughs> good luck. Uh, have fun. Know, I walk it was, away. It was great. Are you really going to walk away? You know, come back. All right, don't come back. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. See, I can direct it myself, okay? You see, you see, the, he's not a visionary. This is visionary, okay? Y'all get the direction I was going in. Anyways, uh, I feel like you're giving me the blanks here and it's probably because you're saying, where's Beverly? What happened to the Nightcap theme song? But relax, Beverly did not get tamar and we're just doing things a little bit differently as we kick off our six part career day series where we highlight young people who are making strides in career paths less traveled. The inspiration behind this series came from Dr. G, I know all my day ones remember her. Dr. G was our very first guest on Nightcap, and she gave us some great advice on declaring college major. In that show, she was asked her thoughts on why we don't often practice in the field we major in in college, and here's what she had to say about it. I think the reason that they don't work in the field that they prepare for is because they weren't exposed beforehand oh, before yes. they declared it. I think, going back to what I said previously, if you allow youth to be exposed to that, they're better able to... Um, say yeah. what they actually want to do. Well, we are using this Career Day series to give you all that exposure. While there are vast career possibilities, we want to focus our attention on those professions we don't often run up against. These professionals are not only going to give you a peek into what they do, but they will also share with you what it took for them to get there and how they got to where they are, what training they received, what obstacles did they face. And I think it's really gonna help all of you guys out there that's struggling to decide what career you want to pursue. Well, to set things off, we have music video director and filmmaker Jordan Riggs. Come on back out, come on. Come back out here, Jordan, since you left me the first time when you hated on my music video. It was good though. I... He began with, don't even, don't, don't even. Okay. Me. He so. began his directing career with the directing group High Five Collective. In 2011, the team created unofficial music videos for some of their favorite artists like The Weeknd, Tyler the Creator, and Trash Talk. Their success in the unofficial space quickly led to the official videos in a contract with Partisan LA. After working for a few years on several projects, the group split up following their individual goals. And currently, Jordan is living in Brooklyn, New York, working on his narrative projects. The Union, a television pilot he created, wow, was recently accepted into the New York Television Festival. And he is working on producing his first feature film, All Saints. Thank you so much for coming, Jordan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for denying my music video, Jordan. Uh, it wasn't that good. And um, thank you <laughs> for opening our Career Day series. I run into plenty of young people who do not know, like they, do, they inspire to be directors and music video directors, but they don't have the idea. So I just really want you to give them a sneak peek into the behind the curtains and what you do. and. We're gonna show our, view, uh, our viewers your reel, which is incredible, right now while we go set up. When we come back, we're gonna talk to you about the whole entire directing and filmmaking thing. Perfect. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. Okay, a little later we'll talk about that. It just happened. But uh, if you're just now tuning in, we have right here music video and filmmaker, director, Jordan Riggs. As I said earlier, Jordan started his career with the directing group High Five Collective. Some of you may know them as H5C. Before we get into ins and outs of your career, I want to make sure everyone's clear about some of the terms in, in filmmaking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what exactly is the role of a director? when making films or music videos? We wanna know, 
Do you have your own chair? But like, you know, <laughs> we, we know that. But uh, what do you do? Um, I think, uh, from my perspective, a director is someone who has a vision and then is able to lead a group of people towards that vision. And um, so a lot of times, I think people could call them the creative director. Uh, it's really the person that has the story and is telling the story um, for that film, yeah. Okay, and as a music director, is it different with filmmaking? Like, what's the, what's the <clears throat> actual difference? Um, with music videos, you have a client. And then with filmmaking, you know, the higher up you get in, in actual uh, studio filmmaking, I guess you do have a client still, which is the studio. But for me, with independent films, music videos, I have to, at the end of the day, sort of listen to uh, the artist because it's their image that comes out. Whereas in like a film, it's just you. It's me. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, people often confuse director and producer, or they speak as though both roles are interchangeable. So what is the responsibility of a producer? Um, to get what I want. I, <laughs> if there's like a, if I need a car or if I need a location, um, a producer will provide, will figure out how to get that or make that happen. So I'll say like, I want a 1999 Chevy, whatever, and they'll go and figure out how to get it. And uh, there's different producers. So there's like an executive producer, typically in filmmaking, they give you money. There's a line producer and they're the person that figures out the budget. Um, and then there's like a unit production manager, which is the person on set who is facilitating, you know, is everybody getting food on time? Is everybody here on time? Um, do we have everything that we need on set? Uh, and they're sort of my left hand man. My right hand man is my assistant director. Okay. Yeah. And people also confuse director with DP, and, mm -hmm. with, and sometimes it's director of photography. So what exactly, what does <clears throat> DP do? Uh, DP is a director of photography or cinematographer, and they handle lighting, uh, camera, sound, not sound, <laughs> lighting, <laughs> camera. Um, they pick lenses sometimes, and sort of depending on the relationship between the director and the director of photography, um, it, it, it can vary. But Typically, they're the person that is in charge of the look of the movie. Okay, cool. So now there are different types of directors. Mm -hmm. So those who are more as DPs, mm -hmm. uh, who are script writers, and those who work closely with the actors and concentrate on like character development and stuff like that. So what category do you fall in? Mm. Um, oh, this is rough. I think that I started out, I really, the way that I started out was that I wanted to create worlds. So I think that something that I'm focusing on now is sort of designing the characters inside of those worlds. But I would say that as a director, um, I always start with where are we? Like where are we in the world of this script? What, what world am I creating? Um, and then I think in a lot of ways I let my actors take control of what they want to do. Yeah. And that's what I was just about to ask you because, I mean, it's like not similar to what you've done. Mm -hmm. No way I can compare <laughs> to that at this moment. But she you know, can. like in high school, I did like shows and I would write and like for the show and then like <clears throat> my director would be like, okay, you're gonna direct that skit. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, don't know nothing about directing. And it's just like, I got the idea, I kind of studied at home, my mom yeah. helped me and then I'm like, okay, so the actors, what do you want? So do you do that most of the time? So I, I, I have a um, idea of what I give the actors a world to live in, and then they're act if they're really good actors, then they can give me back what I need based on that world because their job is to deliver a character. So a lot of times I'll tell them, this is what's going on here. Um, this is where these characters come from. Um, inside of those confines, do what you think would be appropriate. And then if something doesn't feel right or it feels fake, my job is to tell them it feels fake and to sort of work with them to figure out how to make it feel real. Yeah, because that's all I learned in acting school. Do not make it look fake. Yeah. It has to be real. Absolutely. So now, here's where the controversy comes in. Okay. Do you need to go buy a fancy film school <clears throat> camera? Or like go, I'm sorry, fancy film school to be a director or like, Someone should just go out and buy a camera and just start directing. What, what would you say? Um, so I get this question a lot, actually. And so people will ask me, do you, do you think it was beneficial to go to college? And I always say, for me, it gave me a head start, absolutely. But do I need college? Not at all. Um, I think as a creative, 
your voice is your voice and college sort of refines it and helps you find it faster for some people. Um, but I think for other people- Some it, people, they just go. Yeah, but, yeah, they get it, it clicks. And I, I don't think, I think that a lot of that is knowing who you are as a person, but school costs money and I don't, I mean, that's money that could go to your first film, so yeah. You've heard it here first. <laughs> don't go, I'm just kidding. Um, so <laughs> what training did you receive? Um, I studied at Brooks Institute, and it's, it was in Ventura. They actually recently closed. It was sad. Um, really? Yeah. I don't know everything behind it because I'm not there anymore, but um, that's where I studied. I got my Bachelor of Arts degree there, and I finished in like three and a half years or something, So, but it was a year-round school. So, so speaking of cameras. Mm -hmm. I've got to ask you, what is your hardware of choice? I hear people gawk over the red camera. Yeah. What do you use and why do you use it? So, um, I've definitely used, the, I've used about it, just about everything. I haven't shot 35 millimeter film um, or IMAX film. But IMAX film is crazy. It's beautiful, right? It's crazy beautiful. It's super amazing. Um, so hopefully one day I can get on some 35, but 16 millimeter right now is my uh, format of choice, my medium of choice, and then below that would be the Alexa, and then uh, the red is under that. But Sony has a new camera, kind of new, called the FS7, which I've been using a lot recently. Well-priced, really amazing images. All I, I need to hear is well-priced. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need to hear is well-priced. Yeah. Like, cool. Yeah. Okay, so what, what camera did you start? Oh man, a 35 millimeter film camera. Just, I had a Pentax. And so when we first started shooting, we had to do still images to tell stories because film is a, a visual art. Um, this was in school, so we would just like shoot 35 millimeter film. Um, and I had to learn how to tell stories without words or without like stringing together images from one image to the next. And that was very helpful for me. Before that, I, as a kid, I would just run around with a little camcorder like, I got a VHS camcorder and would shoot with the kids on my phone. block. Would you use your phone or that? Uh, I, we didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> that was very stupid of me to ask. No, it wasn't. That was very stupid of me to <laughs> it ask. It was really smart, actually. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get to the good stuff. You started in H5C. Yes. So who was in it, and how did it form? Um, I can't really tell you the names. No, I can't. Uh, there's a guy named Mitch Dequiet, uh guy Cairo Grohl, or Zach Grohl. Hi, Mitch, and hi, Cairo. And then there's Zach, uh, I mean, not Zach, Kyle uh, Salazar and Scott Stanley. And they were, it was the four of them and me. And when, when we started, I was in Nebraska and they were in California and I ended up moving to California to- Just be with them? Yeah. Wow, so would you say you guys are like the boys to men of like directing? Sure. That'd be really cool to have like <laughs> film directors that are groups, they travel in groups, they're like Destiny's Child <laughs> and they like direct different films? Yeah. Think about it. There's a couple groups like that right now. Um, I'm trying to think what is, I just watched a movie that Kid Cudi is in actually, and there's three guys, and when one isn't directing, the other two are producing. Wow. Yeah, it's great. I know like when they do like duos, like Anthony and Joe Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, the Scott, that's it. Ridley, Scott, and Scott Tony. Scott and? Tony? Or? I think it's Scott and Tony. Right. Wait, no, Ridley, Riley and Tony. Ridley, Ridley, Ridley and, and Tony. Tony, yeah. Yeah, so H5C started out with unofficial videos. Yes. So, with creating unofficial video, would you say that helped you guys, you know, carve out this niche? Um, I think that doing unofficial videos gave me knowledge on how to go out and do it, just get out and do it. I think I've always, um, when it comes to film, there are a lot of areas where people will say my initiative isn't there. But when it comes to something like film, where I'm very passionate about, um, I learn very quickly that I'm the only person who can make sure that something happens. And I think High Five really, the unofficial videos really um, kept me going on that path and understanding that I'm the only person uh, that can make this happen. If, if, it's, if the money has to come out of my pocket and no one else is gonna pay me, then it's gonna come out of my pocket and I have to figure out how to make it work with what I have on me, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. So how did you all come up with the idea of uh, these unofficial music, music videos? Were you just sitting around and just like, hey, this is a good song, let's make a video? Because I know most of the time, like me and my best friend always say, I saw the video in my head for the song. Yeah. If the song is not, like if the, the song has to be good yeah. for it to be in your head, you're like, oh, this should be a video. Yeah. So was it like that for you? Or? Um, so the first song that 
I wasn't actually there when it first started. I, the first song that they did was for the weekend, and um, it was called "The Morning." And so they shout out to the weekend. Shout out to the weekend. <laughs> they hit me up and they said, uh, "Yo, we're gonna do this video. Do you mind like looking at some stuff um, and telling us telling us what you think?" Mm -hmm. So they went out to the desert. They just shot it. Uh, Mitch directed that one, I believe, but they all had pretty intricate roles in it, and. That's how it started. It was really just, at the time, no one was doing unofficial videos like that. They had the idea in their head, like you said, and, and then they put it out. And then I saw that one and was like, oh, I definitely have ideas in my head for some other stuff. And it let, one video led to another, led to another, and yeah. Just They're great. The yeah. unofficial videos are great. Thank you. So let's get, let's get in your coin. Let's yeah. get in your wallet. Okay. Because these unofficial music videos do not look unofficial <laughs> at all. They That's don't great. look low budget. That's great. So. How much did it cost to make all these videos? And where'd you get the money from? Um, we all worked nine to five jobs. And so we would make money. And then whatever was left over at the end of the week, we would use to shoot our videos. And the other thing is like. Must have been a lot. It must have been a lot. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. It must have been a lot. We had, OK, I could tell you that I, the most I probably spent on a video was about $200. And <laughs> it was like. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a lie. Is it? Are you lying? Right I'm now? not. Two hundred. Yeah. I would just. It doesn't look like it. That's it great. It just doesn't look like it. I'm sorry. That's just my natural reaction. That's, it just don't look. Like that's it. awesome. I think that's that was the goal. The goal for it to not look two hundred dollars. <laughs> um, my, the plan was, you know, you have all these people in your in your circle who know how mm -hmm. to do certain things, and so we would find. We knew makeup artists. We knew. Um, where we could get, like for the No Church in the Wild video, there's a hanging scene and we knew, okay, what we need is rope and a few actors. And all the actors were friends of mine. So I really started out. Just go get some rope. <laughs> just get some rope. We just need a couple of actors. Just yeah. and, then, and then it was from there, it was, I, my dog is in that video. Like my actual family dog who is staying with my parents currently is in that video. Um, and it's wow. just really using your resources. You just manage it well. Yeah. That's Everybody great. can do it. Anybody can do it. Nike does it. <laughs>